Well, what they're basically asking us here is they're asking us to find the minimum for this function. They want us to find the minimum. Uh, and the way we do that is looking for critical points. So we have to take the derivative. So uh, it's easy, better to write this in terms of an exponent, and that makes it easier to take the derivative. And we might need the second derivative too, so I'll take that. How do you find the critical point by setting the first derivative equal to zero? By the way, you can also have a critical point where the first derivative is undefined. So you also have to look for places where the first derivative is undefined. But the only place this is undefined is when x is 0, and that's not in the range that we're looking at. Oh, you also define for undefined. Critical points are wherever the first derivative is 0 or where it's undefined. That maybe the undefined might not come up too much, but uh, you have to check to see if it's undefined anywhere. But we're only looking at positive x's, and this is defined for all positive x's. So we just look for where the first derivative is 0. I'm sorry, where x is undefined for the, um, the derivative? So let me uh, say that again. The critical points are any x that makes the first derivative 0 or any x that makes the first derivative undefined. So the critical points are where uh, the first derivative is 0 or where the first derivative is undefined. x is never undefined because it's just an independent variable. Um, but we want to know where this derivative could be undefined. So this is the first derivative. And you can see this is undefined if we try to plug in a 0 for x. If we try to plug in a 0 for x, this would be undefined. So x equals 0 is also a critical point. But it's not really relevant here because we're only supposed to look at the positive x's. So we can see that there's other critical points where x is positive 1 or negative 1. But we can get rid of negative 1 for the same reason that we got rid of 0. Um, x equals 0 is not part of our range, and x equals negative 1 is not part of the range that we're looking at. So the only critical point that we care about is where x is equal to 1. Uh, and then uh, we have to figure out what does the graph look like there. Does it look like this, or does it look like this, or does it look like this, or does it look like this? Um, well, we could use the second derivative to figure that out. So the second derivative is positive there. Does that mean that we're concave up or concave down? Concave up. That means that when x is equal to 1, the graph looks like this. So does that mean this is a maximum or a minimum? Min. You know, we can see that just from looking at that. But that's what we were looking for. We were looking for the place where we're going to minimize this function. So it looks like x equals 1 is the place to minimize the function. And uh, we, know that there's uh, we know that this is never going to turn around and find another minimum that's even lower because there are no other positive critical points. So um, this is the only positive critical point, so we're never going to start dipping around and getting even below this. So this is the absolute minimum. So does that answer the question? Find the positive number x, and the answer is x equals 1. So basically what we did here is we uh, set the first derivative equal to 0, and then we used the second derivative test to make sure that was a minimum. Sense? Yes or no? Wait, well, how do you use the second derivative test? Now, the first, the first derivative test just tells us that the slope is 0 when x is equal to 1. But that doesn't mean it's a minimum. It could be a maximum. Or it could even be uh, something weird like this. Or maybe this doesn't come up too much in your course. But it could easily be a maximum like this. So all we know when we figured out that this was a critical point was that the graph looked like this, like this, like this, or like this. Um, well, the way to figure which, out which one it is is to realize that use, using the second derivative test, when x is equal to 1, the second derivative is positive. Well, a positive second derivative means concave up. 
And this is what concave up looks like. This is what concave up looks like. This is concave down. And these are really neither. This would happen when uh, the second derivative was zero. I don't, maybe that doesn't come up too much in 1a. So these are the two cases you really have to watch out for, concave up or concave down. Uh, I find it helps to just make this little sketch here to think, about, to think about things. The first derivative tells us that the picture looks like this or like this. And then we can use the second derivative to figure out whether it's concave up or concave down. This would be when second derivative is positive, and this is when the second derivative is negative. Uh, well, the fact that this was positive tells us that it's concave up, which tells us that this is a minimum for the function. But that's what they were asking us for. They were asking us for the place where we got the minimum value for the function. 